All right, welcome back to the Reverend Geek YouTube channel. And today, uh, well, first let me call something out. You may have re realized I didn't release a video yesterday. Been trying to get these out on Monday, but this is partially because I was busy, but also I was trying to get information about the news of Halloween being shopped around, if you haven't heard. Uh, the rumor is um, the Akkads are f shopping Halloween around and it looks like Paramount might be the buyer of the franchise and the rumor going around is that we will get a new trilogy of films and also it sounds like the idea of a series for Paramount Plus will come out where it will follow uh, within the events and universe of Halloween 3. Now, you know, if you're here, you know my thoughts that everything fits together. And this is where we could go into a multiverse idea, but the idea that I'm hearing about the uh, TV series is that it may finally go into the anthology that John Carpenter originally envisioned for the Halloween franchise. That said, that said, we are here for part three of our series, and today we're going to continue to break down how all the Halloween films from 1978 to 2022 are one story, minus the Rob Zombie series. Those are its own universe, its own thing. That's how the multiverse within the Halloween franchise exists, in my opinion. Today, we are going to focus on Marion Chambers Whittington, or Nurse Marion, Nurse Chambers, however you want to remember her by. She was Dr. Loomis's advocate, nurse, and partner in crime who helped battle Michael Myers in Halloween and Halloween 2. That said, the reason why we have to focus on her is because... She has an almost definitive death on screen in Halloween H20. Now, notice I said H20. A lot of people will say H2O. It's H20. And it's an interesting thing. Let's talk about H20 for a second. H20 was meant to be a reboot and direct sequel to Halloween 2. Nothing of the other films is mentioned, although... Laurie Strode does mention faking her death in a car accident, which is a plot line that is carried over from Halloween 4. If you want to know how this all fits into my theory, go back and watch the first video, and you'll see there's a point where I talk about how this all fits together. Now, this film has its lovers and its haters. It's a product of its time, both... Halloween H20 and Halloween Resurrection were made at that time uh, when it was the Scream I Know What You Did Last Summer era of teen horror films. Still, this does have its merit and isn't as bad as many think or even remember. Is it a good film? Mm, that's debatable. But it's not Resurrection bad. Remember, Resurrection is the one that gives us the ambulance driver reveal that doesn't make sense because if Michael had been the had swapped places with the ambulance driver, why was it that it seemed the ambulance driver was trying to kill uh, Laurie? That said, <clears throat> many would argue that Marion dies in H20, but let us break down some th some things. What H20 does let us know is that Marion and her husband took care of Loomis as he was older. We could argue that the final fight between Loomis and Myers left him injured beyond what he was after Halloween 2 and in need of care. After all, there is this line from the cops. So whose house is this anyway? Marion Whittington, Dr. Sam Loomis's nurse. He was that shrink that died a few years ago. He lived here. She took care of him. Oh, I remember him. I saw a thing on 60 Minutes on him. Spent his life tracking down that Halloween guy who butchered all those kids up in Haddonfield, right? Michael Myers. Right. 
Hey, you don't think Michael Myers? I never found his body. Yeah, but that was like 20 years ago. It would indicate that Michael was still on the loose and that Loomis was injured enough that he needed the care of his good friend, Marion, to take care of him the rest of his life. But let's note, in this scene, they are taking the bodies out of Jimmy's home. But Marion is not mentioned as a victim. It takes happenstance that she is a victim of the crime, but even when we look at how Michael takes care of her, there isn't much gore. In fact, I would point out that there is an alternative take to this in which we see no blood and she just seemingly collapses to the floor. That version used to be shown on FX, if anyone is interested, and you can find cuts of that seen here on YouTube. So we can safely assume that the kill is not recorded as the cops appear to speak of Marion in the present tense. So she may go into hiding from this point on and as we see in Halloween ends when the survivors get together and their secrets seem there seems to be secrets hidden among them all and we're going to get to that because tommy is one of the interesting characters tommy has a lot of secrets to hide but i digress that's going to be another video but notice this how this seems to be all tied is when marion meets her natural end she takes out the gun and tells michael shoot him shoot him marion hey michael this is for dr loomis The difference I would point out is that while in H20 we see what appears to be her throat cut, it isn't a gusher of red. And while coming close to the jugular, it could even have just nicked it. And we have to remember that we're talking about a nurse here. Someone who knows how to take care of themselves. Someone who knows how to take care of any wounds. So she could have easily covered herself up. Michael leaves almost right away. We don't really get that confirmation. It's a quick scene. So here you are. Nurse Chambers survived H20 only to meet her end in Halloween Kills. What we get in context from both films is information from previous films, which would not make sense in a non-linear story unless everything fits together. With that, this is Reverend Geek, out. Have a nice day, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next week.